What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for July 31st, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of the podcast. Happy Hump Day, everyone. Hard to believe we're at the end of July already. This summer is flying by. Pretty soon, preseason football will start. And then right around the corner will be the NFL kickoff. Hopefully, we'll be also gearing up for a red October uh, more on that here in a minute. But first, a couple quick housekeeping notes. First, yesterday, if you got the podcast late, uh, the audio version of it, there were some issues with Spotify and uploading. Uh, I had to do a couple workarounds, so I did not get it posted until about 9 o'clock. So best way to stay and avoid that and stay in the loop is to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Video was posted as normal on YouTube. That's at Jimbo underscore Mont. You can also hit me up on the socials, Jimbo underscore Mont on Twitter and TikTok, at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, email me, whatever you got to do. But be sure to like and subscribe wherever you're listening or watching. All of that plays into the algorithm, uh, and I do appreciate your support. All right, yesterday I mentioned while we were going through Ryan Howard's uh record or tying the record of five walks in a game that Jimmy Fox had it and he did in fact do the six walks or had six walks in a game while playing for the Red Sox against the St. Louis Browns but Jimmy Fox was a member of the Philadelphia A's prior to that so I always like I said try to keep my facts straight and give you guys the accurate information and thanks a lot for everyone who reached out and provided feedback about the body image issues we talked about yesterday on our Tuesday motivation slash positivity. It's good to know that uh, I'm not the only one. A lot of you out there have similar issues. So uh, that was the whole goal of doing the men's issue part for the over the four week period for our Tuesday motivation. So thank you for reaching out and the feedback for that. I truly appreciate it. And again, any way we can help, we need to to make it and normalize it more for us to share the things that are on our minds and the things that bother us. So feel free to reach out again if you have any issues or, or need to talk. But again, hopefully you, you were able to get something out of that. All right. Where to begin? Um, I guess we'll start with the easy thing first. And the Phillies will be wearing sleeve patches, uh, advertising from Independence Blue Cross. I'm not sure when that's going to take place. I don't know if that's going to take place for this season or whether they'll start that next season. I know with uniforms, everything is funky. I will try to find more out on that. And there are a handful of people that uh, don't like it. And they think it takes away from the sanctity of the game and things like that. To me, I don't care. I mean, if you look at soccer teams over in Europe, they have ads all over the place. So it is what it is. As long as it doesn't become the Phillies patch and then you're wearing an Independence Blue Cross jersey, it is what it is. Um, In the big picture, is that what we should be concerned about? Because this team is struggling right now. Five in a row and... Just this is a game that there was no way earlier this season they were going to lose. This is a game they'd find a way to win, and it almost feels now they're finding ways to lose games, and it's just it's just a bad stretch. And I'm getting some '93 Philly vibes from this team. And for those of you who were alive and, and followed them, and I remember I watched. Uh, I think I mentioned this on here before. I've watched every single game uh, or at least listen because we didn't have prism when i was a kid so when they played on prism i had to listen to it on the radio but they went through a stretch like this in july of that year it just seemed like they were losing and nothing seemed to be going right for them and they were able to kind of get it turned around and i believe that even extended into like august and september for them because at one point they had a double digit lead a lot like this team, and they ended up only winning the game by or the division by three games. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen to this team, but it's just ebbs and flows of a season. Uh, I'm trying hard to keep that in mind. I know all the baseball guys are like, "It's baseball, bro. That's what happens." I still am suffering from the PTSD from the Eagle season. I'm not saying that this Phillies team is going to collapse like that. 
However, between the Eagles last year and then uh, longtime Philly fans know there's been multiple times in the in the before they went on that run in 07 that they were they were in the lead for wild card spots. There was even one year at back I think it was in the late 90s, like I want to say 95, 96, 90 maybe not 97, somewhere in there where they were in first place around this time of the season and or maybe a little bit earlier in July and then went on so like you have all of those things playing but it is baseball this team is much better and more talented than any of those teams so i do think they they'll be able to turn it around however we will i'm going to take some positives and you know i'm usually not one to be the uh moral victories kind of guy but i did see some fight in that team yesterday they looked a little bit more uh maybe not so much uh lively but it seemed like there was more, they had a different kind of energy and a vibe than what they have been having. So we'll definitely, we'll take that. Like I said, there was still some fight. The, as Bryce said, the superstars, including himself, need to do something. Him and Trey Turner have been absolutely atrocious. And I think that's the difference in the game, to be honest. Like they, they lose by a run, extra innings, and there were a couple times in big spots, him and Trey were not able to get anything. And it, it, those are the two, they're the two big money guys that need to do it. I, I have utmost confidence that they will turn it around. Uh, they should have won that game in the ninth, though. It's just again they they can't get there, and they're pressing them very hard. And Trey even said after the game about uh, one of the things I mentioned the other day was do they need a team only meeting. And Trey said, usually those are for times when guys are are, are lazy and not really doing what they need to do, uh, put it effort wise. And this team is busting their asses. They're, they they are, and, and they're just in a slump. And they're they're too good. I, and if they are going to go through a stretch like this, I'd rather it be now. Um, they're back at it today before heading out to the West Coast, 12.35. Christopher Sanchez is on the mound. Hopefully he can be the stopper. I don't think Nola pitched horrible yesterday, though. I, I really don't. Um, just you got to – when you have a, a chance to win a game like that, they had the bases loaded twice and were not able to, to get it done. So <sighs> – Back at it today. Let's stop the bleeding, salvage the game from this series. And truthfully, as much as I hate West Coast baseball, this might be a good time for them to get away from the media, play late at night, and maybe just bond as a team and kind of keep things rolling. There were a couple trades at the deadline for the Phils. Nothing splashy. Uh, but they did bring in Tanner Banks from the White Sox to be the left-handed reliever in the bullpen, or one, one or the other, essentially to take Greg Soto's spot, who was then traded to the Orioles to replace some of the prospects. So now the Orioles basically have our old bullpen, which wasn't good enough to get it done. We'll see if those guys all of a sudden magically turn it around. Uh, so that's where we stand as a team. Uh, nothing splashy. But I don't think there was anything that Dombrowski could have done that would have changed the the way the team has played. Uh, Essentially, it's up to the players at this point. They need to start playing. Um, I I have confidence. Rob Thompson said he likes this club. Uh, I'm still borderline panicking, but I think a lot of that is my PTSD setting in. Uh, But let's go out there and get the win today and, and salvage something from this series um we i mean we have to i mean the braves won so the lead is now seven and a half excuse me i did say i'm not going to start panicking until we get to the uh under five uh so we we got some time but the tough west coast trip hopefully like i said that's going to be what they need But that does lead us to today's question of the day. And yesterday I asked you, or we'll get into yesterday's recap. But the question of today, how do you feel after the trade deadline? How would you grade Dombrowski's trade? Are you feeling good, kind of meh, or you think he should have done more? 
267-495-8531. That's Back to the Future voice and text line. Tell me how you feel. Hit me up on the socials. Are you happy? Are you just kind of like, yeah? <clears throat> Are you upset about it? Because there's a lot of people that said he should have made a big splash. I'm not necessarily one of them because I, I do feel that the, the way the team is constructed, I mean, they're all, they, and this is the always the fear with this team, is when they don't hit, they all don't hit together. But here we are. But let me know what you're thinking. How are you feeling after the trade deadline? 267-495-8531. Voice, voicemail, text message, whatever you got to do. Get that. Anything else Philly sports related off of your chest. And then let's recap why we're here. Let's recap yesterday's question of the day. I asked you, should the Eagles retire Nick Foles number nine? Lots of strong feelings both ways on this. But 53% of you said no, they should not. I do agree with you. A guy on Twitter who I was having a discussion with did bring up a good point. He was like, well, he did win the only championship, and that's what people remember. To me, though, if you're going to retire Nick Foles' number, then where does that leave Randall? Where does that leave Jaws, both who had better Eagle careers than Nick Foles? And I, and I do think, you, to me, retiring a jersey is basically for the best of the best like you're talking hall of fame or hall of fame level players and yes nick Foles had a hall of fame moment in philly sports history but i don't think he 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 deserves that honor and truthfully the eagles are very good with whose numbers they retire and the only questionable one and i know this might be a controversial take too is jerome brown's number 99 And I think that got retired because everybody got caught up in the emotion. Would he eventually had had his number retired? I think the way he played, absolutely. However, unfortunately, his life and career was cut short. But I think everybody got caught up in the uh, emotion of it. And I think kind of Reggie and those guys kind of pushed to to honor him with retiring his number. Um, But again, I don't, I cannot in good conscience retire Nick Foles number like I said the statue is fine but I can't retire his number but thank you as always for participating in the question of the day and this this is a hot button issue because there it wasn't like a a runaway it was 53 percent so few votes either way would have made it uh could have swung it the other way so but that's where we stand uh if you want to still continue to comment on that hit me up on the back to the future voice and text line But, all right, yesterday the Eagles did hit in pads, and apparently Quinion Mitchell has been playing well. Uh, And, I mean, he's guarding two of the best receivers in the league, so that's only going to bode well for him. Played halfway decent in one-on-one drills, they said yesterday, versus A.J. Brown, which I like to hear. Jalen Carter was just all over the place, uh, which I love. And I think he's going to be the key to that defensive line um and if he can stay <sighs> conditioned and that is one of nick sirianni's biggest focuses this year it's conditioning so if he can stay and not get tired and kind of crash like he did at the end of the season i think they're going to be okay there uh, there was a change to the onsides kick rule which uh, essentially you're never going to see an onsides kick again um Basically, you can only do them in the fourth quarter. You can only do them if you're losing, and you have to announce your intentions to do an onside's kick. So no more surprise kicks like the Eagles did to open the season. Uh, what was that, 2001 in Dallas? Not going to see things like that. The Saints, I believe, did it to open the second half of that Super Bowl against the Colts. And, and I, I, I'm not a fan of this. It's not one of those things where I feel strongly one way or the other, though. But I think you're taking sort of some of that element out of the game. And it's a shame, really, because, uh, like I said, it's fun when you do the surprise onside kick to start a half or start a game off. But no more. You can only do them in the fourth quarter and if you're losing and if you announce your intention. So, hey, I'm going to kick this onside kick. Put your hands team out there. But this is today's NFL. All right. 
Philly Goat, I, I mean, what can I say about them that I haven't said? I mean, you need to go check out their T-shirts. They're doing great things with charity. T-shirts are amazing. But I think with where we are right now with the Phillies, and I saw on Philly Goat's Twitter account yesterday, somebody had this shirt down at the game, and it summed it up perfectly. I have a toxic relationship with Philadelphia Philly sports. So go get your toxic relationship with Philly sports because we all have it. Uh, just wait till Sixers season. See how toxic that relationship is with me. Go check them out. Get the shoes. They got the new. Remember the circle game? It's like, hey, and then you punch somebody in the arm. They have a shirt for that. And I'm not condoning violence. I'm not saying you should buy this for your kids. But your kid will be the all-time champion in that game just because it's on a shirt. But go to phillygoat.com. Check out their selection. Back to school is here. Get some back to school shopping done. Show your support for your Phillies te- Philly teams. And use the promo code Jim Montgomery to take 10% off your order at checkout. That's phillygoat.com. Promo code Jim Montgomery at checkout for 10% off your order. And be sure to check out my boys also at Clashing Conferences Podcast. They are gearing up for football season. They did a good job during basketball. And the baseball one has been great. Um, new episodes drop every Friday. And that's available wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. All right. Hopefully this is going to bring some positivity to the Phillies. Uh, but today we're going to go back to 2009. And on this day in 2009, Cliff Lee made his Phillies debut, and it was a memorable one. He pitched the complete game, four hit, gave up one run, had six Ks, only walked two batters, and the Phillies beat the Giants 5-1 to one out in San Francisco. Not many people saw it because it was West Coast baseball. I hate West Coast baseball, but I think this team does need a little bit of a break right now. But Cliff Lee in that debut also went two for four at the plate with a run scored and a double. Jason Worth was the offensive star of the game, went two for five with a homer and three RBI. The Phillies at this point extended their or maintained their six game lead over the Florida Marlins. Cliff Lee, to his credit, did his part to help get the or Phillies back to the Super. Or, oh my God, I got, I got Eagles on my mind. Cliff Lee did his part to get the Phillies back to the World Series in 2009. Went 7-4 with a 3-3-9 ERA. Three complete games, a shutout, 74 strikeouts in 12 games. And then in the playoffs that year, he was outstanding. Pitched in five games, went 4-0 with a complete game, 33 strikeouts, a 1.56 ERA. And then the Phillies did the stupid offseason trade. Um where they could have actually traded for Roy Holiday, kept Cliff Lee, had Cole Hamels, uh, which they all ended up coming and playing for the Phillies two, a couple years later. But man, what could have been with Cliff Lee, who actually was prime Cliff Lee during that time period, teaming him up with Roy Holiday that year? I don't think the Phillies would have ever lost uh, that series to the Giants. But on this day in 2009, Cliff Lee made his major, or Phillies debut in a 5-1 to one win out in San Francisco. Pitched a complete game, went 2-4 for four at the plate. And I just remember everybody was like, oh, we love Cliff Lee. All right, finally today, our Philly Olympic spotlight. We can go a little bit outside the general area, but still close enough. This place is only about 40 minutes from me. And Chris Giuliano, who is a swimmer from Douglasville, PA, it's basically just north of Pottstown. I believe it's like one or two exits up 422 after Pottstown. But he is from Douglasville, swam at Notre Dame, has qualified for five events for this Olympics, the 50, 100, and 200 meter freestyle, and then the 4x100 and the 4x200 freestyle relays. He's already won gold in the 4x100 relay. Won a silver medal last night in the uh, the four by two hundred, yeah, the four by two hundred freestyle relay. It's a mouthful to say. So he has a gold and a silver already with the three individual events. He will be swimming for gold in the hundred meter freestyle finals this afternoon. I believe it's around four thirty. If you want to watch, but Chris Giuliano from Douglasville is today's Philly Olympic spotlight. Chris. Let's go out there and win another gold medal this afternoon to add to your gold and your silver Silver, you already had. On this day in 2009, Cliff Lee made his debut for the Phillies, 
pitching a complete game, line one run, four hits, six strikeouts, and then went two for four at the plate with a double. Very much one of the best debuts for a Phillies traded player of all time. We all know how that season unfortunately turned out because of the stinking Yankees, but hopefully we can change those fortunes around today with Christopher Sanchez on the mound at 1235. If you're going down to that game or the Liverpool Arsenal game, you probably should take public transportation. It's going to be a mess. When they had a practice, and this is the PSA uh, announcement portion of the show, but we went down to the game on Sunday. We were only allowed to park in one side of the the link parking lot, the K-Lot, and they did tell us that if we're coming down to today's game, that lot, the K-Lot, is not going to be available for the Phillies today. So keep that in mind if you're going down. Take public transportation, whatever you got to do. But it could be a traffic nightmare. Uh, but as always, be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are on Dombrowski and the Phillies trade deadline moves. How are we feeling? You got you feeling good? Kind of eh? Or you are you wish they would have done more? 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. Get that. Anything else Philly sports related off of your chest. But let's go. Let's end this streak. Go out west. Regroup. And everything will be all right. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for July 31st, 2024. Looks rainy and dreary out there. Hopefully the Phillies get this game in. Go have yourselves a Wednesday. I'm Jim Montgomery. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.